Hello, and welcome to Costumer Confidential, your backstage look at the museum. Now today, we are going really backstage. Nobody ever sees this area. This is kind of like my lair as costumer. And I have to say, it probably looks like your laundry room at home or maybe one of your closets. So don't expect perfection here. But I just wanted to tell you a little bit about behind the scenes. So first of all, in case you were laboring under the delusion that I wash all of the costumes on one of these down by the stream, Quaint and sweet as that would be, I would never get it done. So look what I have, these fantastic stacking washer and dryer bought for me by the city of Pickering. Now, I will tell you that this is actually really useful for getting grass stains out. So I do use this occasionally. But anyway, there we are. So that's my, that's my secret. You've, the secret is now out that you know how I do the laundry. Now, this is where we store all of our, all of our costume collection for the staff and volunteers. Up here, you're going to see some of our hats. We are so fortunate that we have a costume committee of 22 people. Um, several of them are excellent milliners. They make the most beautiful hats. We make them on site here. And uh, you can see some of the beautiful things back here also. We also rejoice in the fact that uh, our costume committee knits and crochets. And in fact, they make the costumes. Now, if you were wondering how we make them, I will show you that we have a whole, uh, a whole lot of patterns here. There's a, an example of a, of a pattern for, a, for a, an 1810 sort of outfit there. We have a, a two drawers of patterns for these. There's another whole, si whole uh, system here. There's a nice one there for a, a 1909 Beatrix jacket pattern. Now these patterns uh, usually uh, are based on extant originals in museums, uh, collections, and what they do is they then make the patterns. So these are very, very accurate patterns. Uh, on another costume or confidential, we'll show you our bins of fabric, which are over in the Odd Fellows basement, but that's for another day. For now, follow me and we'll take a look at some of our costumes. So we have racks of ladies' dresses here. Uh, they're all in date order. So uh, we started with 1790. We're now uh, up to, uh, this is, a, this is a, about 1830, this one here. Um, we go through here to see the men's clothing as well. Uh, we have two racks of men's shirts. These are the casual shirts here. We have everything from a small boy's size to a very, very large uh, man's shirt. We also have vests, including uh, some beautiful waistcoats. This is a gorgeous waistcoat here that was knitted by one of our volunteers. Um, and uh, this one is uh, was actually hand spun and hand dyed here too, which is really special. So only very special people get to wear this one. Um, now, we also have another rack of men's pants here. Now these are the pants that are the uh, small fall, broad fall, and breeches. And then behind them, you'll note a whole rack of men's formal shirts. And so we've got all the whites there. At the very back, which I can't really get to at the moment, is the uh, men's formal waistcoats and frock coats. And then we get into the ladies' petticoats. Do you remember what a petticoat is? A lot of people don't remember what a petticoat is, but actually you have to wear petticoats under your dress to be able to give weight to the skirts and make it look proper. You've got to have a petticoat on. And then back here, as I flip over these other racks, we have all of the chemises, we have the Edwardian chemises, corsets are back here, bloomers, because of course we want to have you wear bloomers, and then all of the aprons, woolies, and, and lots of accessories like reticules, which is the little purses that we use, fans, because on a hot day you have to have a fan, and of course hankies. God forbid we see a Kleenex in someone's pocket here, it has to be a hanky. And yes, I wash them all. So, moving on into the uh, shoe room. This is called the shoe room or fancy room. And please note, this was an original feature of this house, the Redmond house. And if you look at the doorknob, it's a really fantastic, almost like a, a tiger eye kind of a china. I love that doorknob. I think that is so cool. So going into the fancy room, you will note on your right, the shoes. Because of course, no one has the appropriate shoes to come and volunteer here. So we have to provide them. We have shoes in every size from a child size 12 to a man's size 16. Now, it's not that difficult to find. If you go to places like the Salvation Army or Value Village, you can often find this kind of shoe or boot. And this is, while not perfect, uh, it is close enough and certainly better than seeing people wear Crocs under a costume, which is my particular dislike if I go to another site and see somebody wearing inappropriate shoes. So they know I'm really fierce about it. So we have lots of shoes for people to use. 
Now, this room is where we keep not only the shoes, but also all of what we call our fancy dresses. So you'll get a look at our fancy dresses in a future episode of Costume or Confidential, but you're not going to see them today. They're all covered up in these beautiful cotton covers, which keep them nice and uh, clean and free from dust. And uh, we sincerely hope there are no moths anywhere in the vicinity because this is also where we keep our wool. And um, this particular one here is a real favorite of mine. This one... Uh, this one is, uh, is, is a beautiful, beautiful Italian wool, and it was bought at a ridiculous price. I mean, I was really happy to get that uh, fabric at that price. And this trim here uh, was purchased. It goes perfectly with this. This was bought at, a, at a, a place in Toronto called Makuba. I always go there and check out the sale rack, but I have to tell you, the trim actually cost more than the wool did. So that gives you some idea of the lengths that we go to to make things right here. So that's all of our wool there. And then back here, you'll notice we have everything from men's cotton stocks and neckerchiefs to collars, undersleeves, bow ties, hand knitted socks, because we have to have that for cold weather for our, for our, our, um, our uh, Ed staff that does the uh, birthday parties in the cold weather. And then this drawer, these drawers here contain lovely things like gloves. We have all kinds of gloves that people can choose from. And also socks. I have to provide socks because although we ask people to, you know, make sure that they have knee socks, inevitably someone forgets. And we certainly don't want to see ankle socks and a big expanse of bare leg. So we always provide the knee socks for people as well. So there we are. I guess you could tell I'm a bit of a tartar when it comes to accuracy, but I think that's really important at a museum. Now, in this drawer, we keep the fichus and lace fichus. So something like that that would go on a dress. And uh, so we have the fancy ones. And we also have the more practical plain ones and these are great for our staff and volunteers in very hot weather because one of the great things about a cotton fichu is you can dunk it in cold water tie it around your neck and then you get this wonderful sensation in really hot weather of, of keeping cool so it's a wonderful way to stay cool on a hot day so that's one of our health and safety measures aside from the accuracy issue and down at the bottom we have all of our hair accessories including a very nice selection of hat pins. Oops, I think I'm caught on that pin. There we go, there we go. These have been collected over a long period of time from various junk shops and antique shops and that sort of thing. And uh, uh, they are all accurate and uh, they add such, such a flair when we put people's hats on, plus the practicality of keeping the hat on the head. So that's a little bit of a look at some of our backstage stuff. Um, as I say, it's part of the museum that you would never normally see. <laughs> but we're very proud of our collection. It's taken more than 25 years to collect and make and organize all this stuff. So um, we're very, very thankful for our uh, Nimble Thimble volunteers because without them, um, a lot of this stuff would never get made. So we are a very fortunate museum. So thanks. That's Costumer Confidential for today. And uh, don't forget to come back to see our special look at our fancy dresses next time. Dum 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 dum. Ba 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 ba